All right, let's go. Thank you. Okay, so Genesis 15 from verse 1 it says, Sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abraham. Abraham what version are you using? Edition. NLT. What version should I use? Uh, it's not. It's just NLT. Oh, my NLT is different. Mm -hmm. Actually, check your own. Actually, your own NLT. NLT I'm using now. You live in translation. Ah, what I'm saying is different, but continue. Is it, is it not Genesis 15? 16, 16, 16. Ah, uh, okay. I heard 15. Okay, so Genesis 16. So now Sarah, Abraham's wife, had not been able to bear children for him, but she had had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarah said to Abraham, the Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servants. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abraham agreed with Sarah's proposal. So Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, Hagar to the took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abraham as a wife. This happened ten years after Abraham had settled in the land of Canaan. So amen. Abraham, amen. Okay, okay, just continue, continue. Okay, so Let's Abraham, Abraham had sexual relations with Hagar, and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress Sarah with contempt. Then Sarah amen. said, "Okay." I think that's the serious set. Okay, that's that's that, that's just let's let's stop there. So okay. I just I just came to my spirit just now. Okay, okay. God gave them a promise. I be all of us are here. God told them about the promise of Isaac. He promised them a child. That was when Abraham was 75, if I'm not mistaken. That was when the promise came. Ten years after. While they were waiting for the promise, they began to try, or through Sarah, they began to try to achieve the promise by themselves. But you need to realize that before the promise came, Abraham and Sarah were bargaining for 75 years of Abraham's life. So I don't know when Abraham married. Maybe if Abraham married 20, calculate it. He did not try to, they did not try to get a child. So they had not gotten any vision. I'm trying to use it in our context today. So we did not have any vision. Now that God has given us this vision, because we want it to be achieved, a vision that we, we did not have at any point, that is only because of God we began to get it. We now want to achieve it by ourselves. So look at it, look at it. Let me, let me, let me come again. Maybe it's not very clear. I don't think I was very clear. So before God gave Abraham the promise, hmm? Before God gave Abraham the promise, Abraham had, I don't know how many years from marriage to 75, to, they had that amount of time to get a child from, their, from, from, from um, Haggai or maybe another of their handmaiden. Abby, they did not. God now eventually gave them a promise. So it almost seemed like they were okay. Until God gave them a promise and they realized that they, they were within touching distance of something, that something can happen. So they were hopeless. I'm using, I'm paraphrasing. It might not be how they felt, but for example, we're hopeless before we came to Christ, right? We're hopeless. Paul tells us that we're hopeless before we came to Christ. So now we've come to Christ and Christ has given us maybe visions of our life. I called you from before you were your mother's womb. I called you to be a prophet, called you to do this, called you to do that. All of a sudden, we are now able, a vision that we did not conceive, a vision that was given to us, all of a sudden, we now want to use our physical energies to arrive at that vision. And then when we do that, a lot of times, we will not go to church, not even church. We say, I say, I say, it's God. I give God the praise. I give God the glory. So what I'm saying is, we need to now come to a place where we begin to, because it's okay if, if, our, if um, our fathers did that. And by the, by the message of God, he walked out. But I realized that as we begin to draw closer to the end of times, the revelation of God increases. What it means is that man now knows more of God to be able to walk as accurate as possible with God. There was a time there was no speaking in tongues. People there, they tried their best. Billy Graham did not speak in tongues. Billy Graham was selling out, not selling, no, sorry, no, it's not money. They were, that is, they're closing out stadiums. 
He didn't speak in tongues. He did not. That was the revelation of God at that point. Maybe that the, maybe the, at that point, that's what they had. But that's what he had. God used it. But the revelation of God begins to increase. It, it seems that God, God is creating, or God is God's attempt to create people that look more and more like Jesus. Happens as he continually reveals himself. Because it's as he reveals himself, we're able to behold him and we're able to become him. So what he does not reveal, we cannot become. So as he reveals himself, we're able to become him. So I was saying, the revelation of God has increased. So it means that a man can start a God assignment by God, carry it with God, and arrive at the end and be able to give God the glory. You don't have to start what God, God, what came in the, so Paul will say, what you started in the spirit, you want to continue it in the flesh. What came to you by revelation? What came to you by intimacy? What came to you by um, 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 prophecy? You now want to, or let me not say you, we now want to, we find ourselves now trying to physically achieve it. So we're not calculating two plus two. No, that's, that's, that's the principle of the word. From the from the and I, you see this thing here, this thing I'm saying I thought about it in 2022 around that time 21. I'm, I'm thinking about this thing. I'm more, I'm more against principles. I'm not against structures. Structures are extremely necessary. More so, please try as possible, try and, try as much as possible to get your structures from the Holy Spirit. Not create structures from anything. Create it from the Holy Spirit. Why? Then even when you create structures, if the Holy Spirit comes today and he says, let us. I'm going to give you a very absurd example. He said, we should say, now nah, he has changed. We should naked and go outside and preach. I know there are some prophets. You know, there's one that, I think it was Jeremiah that wrote on the ground. I don't think there's only one that went naked. If that's God's instruction today, and we can verify it by scripture, and with six, we maybe we rub mine together and say, ah, that's what God, God is saying. It's actually what God is saying. We need to do that. Whether it's the same order our generation started with, whether it's what our generation likes, whether it's what they are doing, if, if we can prove it to scripture, two to three witnesses, rub mine together, pray about it, and arrive at a conclusion that that's what God is saying. We need to do that. Because Jesus is Lord every time. But what equips us to make such radical decisions? Because they're radical to the normal man. Scripture says the spiritual things are foolishness. To the carnal man. What makes us make those sort of decisions is intimacy with God. You cannot take a faith journey believing in a God that you do not know. Because this faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word. If you do not know the word of God, you have not encountered God by his word, it is difficult to exercise faith. And the journey of your life, the journey of a just believer, scripture says a just shall live by faith. It means that, first of all, you come into salvation by faith, but also you come into the salvation of your soul and the salvation of your body, even by faith. And your daily work, because you are ultimately being transformed, is a walk by faith. Let me summarize. Every day you will live by faith. You don't stop living by faith. Because you live by the instructions of a God you do not see. But yet you believe. Let you have encounter. But you cannot prove you say, I will just see Jesus. Even when you have encounters of Jesus, it's not your physical. You can't, nobody, nobody even says that I saw Jesus. I, the, you can't explain. You know that you saw him. But you cannot explain how you saw him. It's about how people say Jesus speaks. You would have heard the audible voice of God. You know that you heard the voice, but Jesus does not speak English. Your spirit caught it in English. And your spirit caught your soul interpreting English. But he's not speaking English. A lot of times they do they, they, they tell you they did not see his mouth move. They just heard it. They knew it was that was what he was saying. So, so here's the conclusion. And this is where I'm driving at. As I begin to end. When a time where intimacy with Jesus has never been this important. There's the reason why we come here every day to read the Bible. Not because anybody knows the Bible more than anybody. 
no. Please, if maybe we might have communicated that kind of information, I apologize. Maybe it's me. I apologize. We gather here to meet Jesus. We don't gather here to meet anybody. So what it means that Jesus is Lord here is Jesus we gather to. Jesus comes first every single time. His instructions come first every single time. His will comes first every single time. Not sometimes. We are not in that place. But we gather here to meet Jesus. That we might behold him. That we might know him. That we might be like him. That we might see his beauty. Oh Lord. Just gather here every time. To look you in the eyes. To look you in the eyes. And to see your beauty. To look you in the face. And to see your glory. Oh precious Jesus. To look you in the eyes. Just behold him. Just behold him. To see your glory. To look you in the face, Lord. And to see your beauty. I want to look you in the eyes and see your glory. I want to look you in the face to behold your beauty. Jesus, we have come here to learn of you. We didn't come here for ourselves. We come here because we love you. I know that we love you first. For you loved us first and you give your life for us, Jesus. So come here, Lord. To look you in the eyes and see your glory. To look you in the eyes and behold your beauty. Lord, we thank you. So we've come to meet Jesus. And the more we meet Jesus, the more we know him. We've come to behold him, just to look him in the face, to hold his hand, to embrace him, to learn of him. Come to experience his love. There's nothing, nothing better than the love of God. There's nothing that can come close. Because nothing in this world can satisfy us. Jesus is the cup that will run dry. And even as we begin to know Jesus, even as we begin to know him by the word, we are being transformed to become like him. Even as we begin to know him, we begin to understand why he created us. And we begin to know the daily instructions of God for our lives. And ultimately, we're able to carry out, we're able to receive the vision, take the journey to the vision, and arrive at the, at the vision with God all through. And when you walk with God, let me tell you the truth. You walk in grace, you walk in ease, you walk in favor, you walk in strength, even when you are weak. I'm not against you praying prayers of favor or praying prayers for all of all those things. But what I realized is Jesus did not pray prayer of favor. Scripture says that he grew, the boy grew in wisdom and in favor with God and then in favor with men. He grew in wisdom. He grew in understanding and knowledge of God. And then favor grew with God and grew with men. It means that, you see that thing they are looking for in Sokoto. If you find Jesus, you hold Jesus tight. Eh? 
every single thing you're looking for will follow you. And when I say hold Jesus tight, not religiously, by being the first person to enter a church, no. If the instructions of God become your default actions, you arrive at a place where you wake up one morning, you see all the things you are looking for, it will be, it will be, they will be following you. And yet, you will still have Jesus. Because Jesus is what you are looking for. So instead of looking for favor, hmm? looking for wealth, looking for health, those things are not bad. Looking for, I don't know what you see. Look for Jesus. Let me, let me look for Jesus and you will see that every single thing you are looking for will follow you. Everything you will not need, no, there are some prayers that you will not need to pray. It. You will not need to, so prayers that you do, you will not need to pray. It. It's not, no, it's not, it's not pride. Is that you are too focused on God that God now needs to be certain that every single thing around you is met because He wants to keep your focus. And by the grace of God, I will find this scripture to prove it. Come, scripture says. All things work. You know, say some things. All things work together for the good of the. You know, we quote the scripture. We never quote the scripture of the criteria. We just quote the scripture with the way it's treated us in our belly. See, all things work together for the good of what? You know, say, say so. All things meaning that favor works together for the person. It means that uh, wealth works together for the person. It means that health works together for the person. It means that love, peace works together for the person. All things work together for they that love the Lord. And are called according to his purpose. That is, they that love the Lord. Scripture says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. And my commands are not grievous. If you love me, he that loves me, I and my father will come and make an abode in him. But how do you arrive at this love? You need to seek Jesus. So the Bible is what we are doing every day. We must come here with a different approach and a different heart. We don't come here for Bermude. We don't come here for Modesty or James or Azonta or Phil. No come here for any. I came here because perhaps I can find Jesus. Even if the, a small part, a modicum of Jesus, of his life, I can find it here. That's why I'm here. If you come without understanding, nobody will need to look for anybody for Bible study because you understand that there's something here. You understand that you come daily, you open the Bible, say, John. Read it, read one line, blend it, and read the second. While learning Jesus, the thoughts, the former thoughts, are casting away all, all thoughts and imaginations against the knowledge of God. We are receiving the, the, the enforcing power of God into our lives and it's transforming us even to become more like Jesus. So I'll end it here. Just to encourage us. Just to encourage us. God loves you. God loves you. Please love him back. I know sometimes it's difficult, but please let us commit to learning Jesus. Not only in this Bible study, it means that in your own personal time, please put, say, one hour, two hours Bible study, one hour, two hours prayer. And not just religiously. Let it be a time where you, not just religiously, it starts like the religious aspect of it keeps you in the devotion of it. But the time, the timing of it is great. But you will still go there. You need Jesus to still be Lord in your fellowship. That is, you put four hours, say four hours. But if you are reading your Bible, you go there and you feel like God is saying you should sing. You will not say, this is my power. It's only to read my Bible. Because they sing it, maybe you will sing. So, one of my friend, he tells, he tells like, they say, if you pray, it's more, if, you, if you read the Bible, we pray like this, the, the revelation is to come. My first is not like that. Uh -huh. so, a lot of times, my own is, if I'm, I will just, I can just align that with thinking before you know, I'm getting something I read somewhere, something I read, you just align. I'll just see what God is saying. And people have different ways. But I will not limit God to that. See, that's how God is to talk. So that God will not pass you and you will not see. Be seeking Him, be seeking Him. So that power is power to seek the Lord. So the Bible study must pass here. 
pray as he must pass here. And I will end it. Lord, we thank you. We thank you very much, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to start again, to start anew. Even this vision you have given us. Lord, we know that lives have been changed and lives will continuously be transformed. Jesus, we give you preeminence in this place. We say you are Lord over this atmosphere. You are Lord over our lives. Lord, we submit our everything into your hands, Lord. We lie down. We drop everything we are, everything we have, and everything we can ever, ever, ever apprehend, Jesus. And we say, Jesus, we want only you. Because we know if we have you, every other thing we follow. So we want you. Lord, help us to make you. Just ask the Lord, Lord, help me, help me. Make you the center of my heart. Let my greatest desire, my greatest zeal, my greatest emotion be towards you. Let me not love anybody anything more than you. Let me not desire anything above you. Let everything in my life be submitted to you, Jesus. I'm tired of lukewarm Christianity. I'm tired of, I'm tired of Christianity as normal. I want you, I want to find. Jesus is you, I want. I don't want, it's too much. the noise is too much. I'm tired. I'm tired of procedure, tired of, I want you, Jesus. It's you, I want. At all costs, you are to be obeyed. At all costs, Jesus. Help us. Oh, we are weak. Sometimes we want to do the things, but we cannot, Lord, help us. Because we cannot help ourselves. Jesus, help us. Help us to desire you, Lord. Help us. Ask the Lord to help you. Just ask the Lord to help you. Just help us. To be able to see what you are saying. Help us that the things around us, the needs, the wants, the we need job, we need sponsorship, we need house, we need husband. But so that those things do not distract us. Help us, Jesus. To keep our gaze at you. Be our greatest desire. I just feel the presence of the Lord in in in, a, in an expression of peace. Just peace filling your heart. The Lord is just releasing peace from all your worries. Peace from all, all the stress. I'm thinking, how will I do this? How will I do that? What is giving you peace? Which surpasses all understanding. Peace. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mind, in the name of prayer. Amen. Um, and as long as can you can you can you talk? Amen. I don't know. Amen. If it's possible for you, like if you cannot mute, if any place where you cannot mute. Yes, I can. Please, you help us sing. You know, oceans. Spirit, leave me when my heart. Yes, you know the song again. Uh, yeah, I, but I don't know the lyrics so much. Okay, let me That's share. It. Let me share it on my screen. Okay, you can share. Mm -hmm. Spirit. Okay. Can we see it? No, I'm not seeing. No. What are you seeing? I'm not seeing anything. It's, it's just blue. Okay, let me try again. Screen. No, let me try it's again. Start broadcast. Okay. Can you see anything now? Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. so let's just sing that. Okay. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, my feet may fall, and there I find you in the me. Sorry, I think, yeah. In, in ocean. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know this one. Well, let me just sing the chorus. Where's the chorus? See the bridge. Sorry. I really oh, don't know the verses. Can someone help? 
Let me just see. Keep my eyes above the rain. My soul remains Let me see the bridge. I am yours, and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your soul's rain will be my my feet, my feet, my feet, my feet, my feet, meeting we thank you for experiencing you thank you for the great work you've done with us we thank you for the great work you're about, able, about to do in and with us and for us just ask that you take preeminence over this vision and this new group chats we ask that you help us learn of you we ask Jesus to strengthen us and you help us increase our desire for you. And you lead us even into still waters. We thank you for your peace, which you have given us, not the peace of this world, but your own peace. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Lord, we ask that when as we go to bed, that we begin to have encounters. Of you, begin to get dreams that brings about revelations of you. Also, know you and know what you have us do with our lives. And Jesus, one thing we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's expect encounters and dreams. If you wake up, when you get a dream, when you wake up, write it. A lot of times, if you don't write it, you forget it. That's what happens. So let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Love of God, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall do on the house of God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Love you all. Shalom.